Hi guys, uh, welcome uh, to our session. I hope you guys are having a good time at DrupalCon. There's still about a couple of days left, uh, so make the most of it. Okay, so uh, jumping right in, I'm gonna quickly introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Devanshu, I head business at OpenSense Labs. You guys can call me Dev, but I am not Dev, I am Biz, he's Dev. <laughs> okay. So, uh, a few of you laughed, but I had this slide just to like empower me. So, just to give it off to Vid again. Uh, I am Vid, and I head architecture at OpenSense Labs. And so, one of our key focus area is to bring technology which is outside the periphery of PHP and Drupal and uh, use that to bit, uh, make better digital experiences. So, that's where NLP and that's where, where IPFS you know, was something we picked up, right? So, yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh, someone who can take a picture, beer is on me. Awesome. Okay, uh, so the agenda of the session will be very simple. Um, we'll uh, first understand what are the current problems of the internet we're dealing with, okay? What is the common thread connecting those problems? Uh, possibly put a solution out there via IPFS, and then connect Drupal and IPFS, and let's think about that. So uh, just to be clear, the agenda of uh, this session is to bring the community together to be more accepting to technologies that are outside Drupal as well, OK? OK, so uh, starting off with the code, there's more than one way to uh, burn a book, and the world is full of people running about with lit matches. So that was said by Rad Bradbury, uh, author of Fahrenheit 451. So he, he meant it in a more literal and metamorphical sense that there will always be people who are uh, deterrent to accepting new technologies, but we as an open source community uh, should be more accepting and see what are the possibilities outside of Drupal and amalgamating that. Okay, so, uh, so these are the three network topologies uh, that we essentially deal with. How the internet started out was essentially a distributed system itself on the, on the rightmost side. Uh, where the client and the HTTP server was handled by a group of people or a singular person. So it made more sense to share uh, data and files uh, in a much more uh, seamless way. How the web has progressed is towards a centralized system where a few organizations or corporations control how we access our information as well, which basically means that uh, if that central node was to go down, all that access to information would go away eventually. So, uh, and considering now we are at that centralized system, we want to shift back to either a distributed method or a decentralized thing. So, um, what are the current problems with the uh, centralized system? Uh, it's a, one is, of course, a single point of failure. Uh, so, just to give you that perspective, so Google, about uh, three to four years back, went down for about five minutes, which brought down web traffic by about 40%. Um, in Jan 2011, Egypt was able to shut down 88% of its web traffic because they control the logistics behind it. Um, and that's, that's sort of power that those central nodes have, right? Uh, censorship again. So uh, Russia has um, anti-extremist laws. If you, if you post or share uh, post-opposition content, there are a lot of countries like China, Bahrain, Israel, control the sort of information you can access. Uh, there are banned keywords in China, okay? So again, it's uh, censorship that's, that's pulling away from the centralized system as well. Impermanence, so everyone's aware of error 404. So uh, one is, of course, with uh, how much kind of information you wanna share out. If it's given with consent that you're putting away information and archiving it, but what happens if those central nodes go down and your users are served with this massive message itself. Bandwidth latency multiple times. So according to me, this is one of the most important uh, uh, failure points of the current way the internet is panned out, right? Uh, with the advent of uh, low-cost smartphones, uh, what's happening is the, uh, the way people can access internet is growing exponentially, but the logistics behind are not at the same rate. So which is causing a lot of latency. For example, if I was to ping a server in Netherlands uh, from New Delhi, it, it takes about 200 milliseconds. If I was to do it to Iowa from New Delhi, it's about 350 milliseconds. And that time is eventually gonna rise. Because people who are accessing that kind of information, they will grow at an exponential stage. Uh, which brings to another problem, bandwidth. So for example, I have to download a one GB uh, file uh, a movie file, and Vid here has to do the same. So we are collectively using 2GB, and for example, you guys want to do that, so we're using multiplied into that bandwidth as well. 
Now, if I have that file already on me, he can just access it from me versus doing multiple network hops um, to get, get that information in. Uh, multiple devices, if they are, let's say, accessing that central node to access that information, okay, well, the channel is restricted, so it becomes slower for you to access those files. So that's another problem we're dealing with. Uh, offline, so we're still living in a world of online and offline at the end of the day. Uh, that central node, I, I keep re repeating the word central node because it's a centralized system that we're dealing with. Um, and if that goes offline, you're not able to access that information. Um, so for example, that 1GB file uh, was there on that server, I'm not able to access it, but if he has it, why can't I use that? Why can't we use that together? Um, security. So. Again, so we, we think security as encryption of data, but what we're actually doing is we're just encrypting the route to access the data, not the data itself. If we were to do that, um, that basically means uh, either we'd be security experts or we'd have to hire one. So uh, we have to, in terms of give that power to ourselves, where we are able to share, I mean, hide the kind of information we want to do and then share whatever that's relevant to us. So those are the problems that we're dealing with. And yeah, we can throw our laptops off. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what's the common thread that connects all of these problems? Uh, it's location-based addressing. If I was to access a file on my own website, I'd have to do multiple network hops. I'm sitting in New Delhi, okay? So th this does a network hop to Europe first, then, then somewhere in the US and, and a couple of cities in the US itself to access that file, which means I'm accessing a physical location, okay? Why, why can't it be something much more simpler in that sense? So what's the solution? Content-based addressing. Uh, it basically means I'm taking that file, passing it through a hash function, which returns the hash of the file itself. Um, and it's almost like a digital uh, fingerprint of the file. Um, this is essentially what uh, Git uses to track uh, changes in repositories as well. Um, we make the content itself content addressable, right? So which brings us to IPFS. So IPFS uh, is essentially a protocol, and it's a peer-to-peer -peer method of storing and sharing hypermedia in a distributed file system itself. Uh, it started out with a mission or a vision to replace HTTP itself, which I personally, and that's my personal opinion on it, um, it will happen um, because, um, I mean, the internet has evolved to a certain extent, but not from HTTP, HTTPS. Uh, from content perspective itself. So advantages, so no content duplicacy. So what happens? So if I'm, let's say, uploading a file to the IPFS, it returns a hash, right? Um, and Vid, he was, let's say, sitting in another part of the country, and he uploads the same file, it will return the same hash value, which basically means I cannot have duplicate data on the IPFS network. Uh, integrity, um, because uh, it, the data uh, structure behind, which we will cover later, is the data structure behind is the Merkle DAG. Um, so if there was, let's say, in that image file, a pixel was to change, it will change the entire hash value itself, which basically means I will be able to detect if uh, my data has been tampered with. Um, there's, of course, high performance now, because you don't have dependency on, on central nodes, but but uh, nodes around you itself, which means you will be able to access that information much more faster. Uh, it's cheaper hosting. Uh, for people who are hosting a lot of data, okay, they have to pay thousands of dollars. Uh, it becomes a, uh, a more cost-effective way to use IPFS and, and distribute data internally as well. Censorship resistant, again, there's no central dependency, so nobody can block keywords. Okay? You, can, you can post as much content as you want. Um, and yeah, keep, keep it censorship free. Access to offline data, so those central node, nodes never go down. You will always have nodes uh, with you. Um, as of now, there are about a couple of thousand, 3,000 3, 3, uh, IPFS nodes that are active right now, and you can host data all over the world uh, with these guys. So yeah, okay, John Hill always saves the world. Okay, so uh, who else is using IPFS? Uh, Uport is basically an identification system that uses I, uh, um, uh, identification system that uses IPFS to create uh, an identity for you guys. Um, Akasha project is a social network um, that again uses IPFS to uh, have censorship-free content posting. Open Bazaar is uh, essentially a marketplace where buyers and traders can transact online without any platform fees, uh, they use IPFS for the distribution methods itself. 
Uh, Arbo is, uh, if, you, if you just put it across, it's Dropbox on IPFS, yeah? Okay, so this is where it comes in. Uh, hi. So uh, we have seen like, you know, what uh, Drupal, uh, what uh, IPFS is about. It's, it's a files, a distributed file system uh, built over the core technology which blockchain has. Uh, but it is meant for sharing files on a decentralized system. And so the common philosophy, Drupal is all about openness and content and giving editors the power, right? And IPFS is about keeping them, uh, you know, keeping them, maintaining the integrity and uh, keeping it that immutable, right? And it's, it appeared very natural that, you know, these two things have to come together or might be very early staged at this point of time, uh, but they will come together to probably solve bigger problems, right? And that's, uh, so just let me quickly go through the internal uh, data structure that is behind IPFS. Uh, this is Merkle DAG. It's a cyclic tree, uh, tree structure where each of the file is actually split into the, uh, multiple blocks and uh, each of the blocks have their own uh, hash and the combination of the child hash is used to generate the parent's hash, okay? So in this example, as you know, they've already mentioned that if you just change one of the you know, blocks at the last level, try to modify it, it will actually change the, the, the topmost parent's hash itself. So that ensures integrity and that also handles redundancy of files. And this is something which is a similar behavior if you notice on a S3, if you upload two exact files uh, internally as S3 on AWS, uh, handles redundancy. Not sure if they're using Merkle tree or Merkle DAG, but yeah, something like that happens. Yes, uh, so now we started brainstorming what could be the possible use cases of IPFS around Drupal or websites in general, okay? So let's, as a backend storage system, so Drupal file system, let's upload, create two file entities, uh, same image, we upload into different media entities and uh, we have duplicate copies on the file system, right? If uh, something like IPFS or the algorithm that you know, Merkle DAG provides, we could actually, this is not a problem for everyone for small sites, but when you are storing large amount of content behind a dam, it is actually a problem. And that's where uh, these technologies inspire us to you know, put this method of uh, creating the signatures uh, using hash to handle redundancy. So that could be one use case in, in, in the space of internet and websites, right, web applications. Then version control. So uh, we uh, already mentioned Git uses a similar, the uh, Merkle, Merkle tree algorithm, right? But uh, version control system for images behind DAM. You know, so, uh, large video files, if you try to uh, upload uh, similar video files, we can use a versioning system which is not actually creating uh, two full copies of the, uh, the same video file, which has slight changes. Right? So that could uh, save on storage and have a better versioning system on uh, for media assets, large media assets. And CDN, this looks to me the like, most promising and interesting one. So we had this problem of network hops, you know, uh, accessing a, web, uh, a server which is based in, uh, based in US here and we are accessing from uh, India or on any remote location. The, that's where the CDN solved a problem to a point where it is you know, replicating the assets to say eight, 10 data centers and you are able to access the nearest one. IPFS can be used to you know, solve that problem to the next level, where it's not only about eight or 10 data centers, but it's across the world on a full IPFS uh, network of 2,000, 5,000 nodes, right? So I think that's the, one of the very interesting uh, possibilities that, that can be used in the very near, near future. Then uh, we started more brainstorming, okay, okay, how do we give the power what Drupal provides to content editors so IPFS is still a technology which only uh, very tech people, tech savvy people can actually you know, leverage. And that's the beauty of Drupal, you know, giving edit editors and the content creators that power to manage and handle content. So this is a small blueprint that we made and there's a small demo based on that just after this. So it's, it's a really simple, editors create all the content on Drupal, we actually, you, we push the the node object as adjacent to IPFS, we maintain the mapping of entity ID and the hash returned by IPFS within Drupal, okay? And that's what is again used by the users to you know, fetch the content. Now this, there are a lot of problems in it. With, uh, this is not something which will actually solve a serious major business problem right out, but yeah, this is a good starting point. And so uh, yeah, I have a small demo right there, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. 
so we uh, made a small module which interacts with so i will like to you know i'll just so what we are doing is we are uploading three images on three different nodes two of them are exact same images and uh, it is being sent to uh, ipfs i'll skip this three images upload i'll just show you the final result so yeah uh, this is where we are uploading two exact images in two different the entity ids are different but the hash returned by ipfs is exactly same if you know if you notice the 30 and 30 second one yeah so this is uh, what i was ref referring to uh, yeah okay so this is a small uh, demo which in, uh, where we are trying to you know rep use this in the media system of drupal okay and the challenges now uh, to solve problems you know, to to make it like, actually usable in like uh, real world scenarios there are certain problems which needs to be addressed probably as i said it's in very early stage uh, searching in ipfs the only way to address uh, the content is uh, using the hash that it generates right so we cannot it's not a full fledged database it's a distributed file system in the end right so we cannot actually search based on keyword or you know, try to access the content in any other way apart from the say hash as a primary key that's it so that's a problem so and again as the second is the complex content relationships the the flexibility that drupal provides us to reference content to you know, reference to we can create you know a complex hierarchy of content pieces right uh, that cannot be handled uh, very easily on ipfs but that is something we need uh, you know probably moving forward uh, might be solved ipfs as views backend now uh, we love views everyone does and that is what uh, is something which drupal is uh, drupal provides to you know end users to make things fast uh, quickly and uh, you again the same problem that we have with searching the only way to access the con uh, you know, access the files on ipfs is the hash it's i don't see a straight up way of doing it but again this is a problem which needs to be resolved and orphaning of content on ipfs is very common so for example in the previous blueprint that we discussed if we get to lose the mapping of entity ids and the uh, and the hash mapping you know, if we somehow lose it uh, the content which is already on is on ipfs is orphaned you, there's no way to figure that and find that out unless someone else uploads it again and gets the same hash right so that's uh, these are the few of the problems that needs to be addressed to you know, where it becomes a prob real problem solver and but yeah the other use cases uh, not necessarily you know, wrong with Drupal, but in general is for archivists who, if you want to store large amount of data and you know, make that uh, you know, permanently available, yes, uh, IPFS is a good solution uh, to store. It's cheap. It's, uh, it, it's, it's cheap and the performance is pretty good. If you're delivering large amount of content, as the example we discussed about the CDN, if you're delivering large amount of, you know, uh, amount of content to users or media to users, IPFS is a good solution, it's cheap, and where you actually save a lot of money on bandwidth. Uh, researchers, uh, researchers are always short of funds, like you know, running short of funds, and <laughs> hosting is uh, is a you know large amount of research data is a problem. So now they need it to access them really fast and you know in a, in a cost effective way. So for them, research it's a good solution, it's a good way to approach, I think. And content creators, uh, that's just about the spirit of <laughs> web keeping content out there without you know, keeping it uncensored and at a low cost i think for them it's a good a good start yeah so Dave. okay so um, now we understood uh, how drupal can uh, amalgamate with ipfs itself so uh, so we we are uh, running at that almost at a threshold where um, the cost of producing content okay will go much higher than cost of delivering content okay um, and Drupal is content centric. So, uh, and if there's an there's an alternative to avoid that, uh, I think IPFS becomes inevitable in that sense. Um, again, uh, like we said, uh, for content creators, it you, you get to empower yourself. Okay, what the sort of content you want to share, the sort of content you want to talk about. Okay, uh, so because it's content addressable and we're using content signing, so DDoS attacks become impossible because there's no physical location to do those DDoS attacks. So again, uh, you save money uh, on security measures as well. 
Um, because there is no origin server uh, and uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, internet uh, penetration that's happening in the developing countries, uh, for them um, it becomes much more easier and faster to access the web itself. Okay, So uh, now we as a community need to come about and think as to what all possible use cases can be uh, can can add on, okay, and uh, that's about it from us. I think we wrapped up exactly in time. Yeah, okay, awesome. Thanks. Uh, just uh, just uh, thanking a couple of more people who are not here but helped us put this demo and this uh, stuff together. So they are for people from our team. And I just uh, met this gentleman from Wipro who were, they're actually working on something, putting Drupal and Hyperledger together. They're having a BOF, of, uh, this is a BOF 4 at 3.45 PM, I guess. So if you're interested in taking that uh, discussion further, we'll, that is a good point to start. Okay, join us for contribution sprints Friday. Yes, definitely. And you can always give us feedback. Uh, yes, we can open up to Q&A. Yeah, okay, awesome. Guys, any questions? Oh, we can, we can, oh yeah, okay. Nice work, guys. Thanks for presenting this. Is this module available for community to try? Yes, this is. Okay, could you mention that on your slide somewhere uh, when you post them on your I, session? You All right, perfect. Job. So when we upload the deck, we'll upload it with the uh, module. Per link. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. So uh, I think you guys are mentioning this um, file system stuff from a public standpoint, things are open. Um, how would something like this work when things need to be, there needs to be access control? So I'm a researcher, so this is very interesting, right? Yeah. Um, so how, how can something like this work with access control? In some ways you have done a CDN, right? With, yeah. with, with hashing, right? But what, what about access control? Because yes. that's the next level. So uh, when you when we actually do the signature function that the function that actually generates that hash when you upload a file or any content on IPFS you can actually use a secret key to encrypt that. So IPFS has that possibility. That's encryption, not necessarily access control. So you are saying, oh, our stuff yeah. is open, but nobody can 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 get to it. That's you know. I, I don't think many of the PHI data people would like that kind of, you know, uh, encryption level access control. The access control means yeah, nobody can um, get the stuff, right? So uh, it's different. See, uh, the content is out there. The only way to access is if you keep it uh, non-encrypted. Uh, only way to access is using the hash key, right? Uh, if you encrypt it, again, you need the secret key with it. But uh, the more ACL is more on the application side, right? And that's where systems like Drupal needs to be able to talk to IPFS in a way that it provides that flexibility. When I was talking about com complex entity relationships, this this gets into that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Hey guys, thanks. So since this is, a, you know, sort of like a, you're. <coughs> investigating technologies that are not really business ready yet, right? Like you're looking very far forward. Yeah. Do you have a roadmap or do you have like maybe some next stages? Where are you gonna build that connection so that maybe we have like something as a CDN or something we can use on our sites in the next six uh, months, so year, this two years? Was, the, the demo that we showed was just uh, you know, something which was put together in two days <laughs> before the triple con. Sure. Okay? But we have been researching and doing POCs around other blockchain uh, uh, technologies apart from IPFS. But IPFS was one we figured out that which is closest to solve business problems. right? And I think, uh, for example, if you look at the uh, one of the examples they mentioned was about Dropbox, uh, which is using IPFS, something like Dropbox. So I think uh, CDN is, we are not actively working on it right now to build something like that. It's more of a POC stuff. Uh, but I think uh, CDNs should be coming up. Someone should be doing it very soon. <laughs> okay, yeah. great. All right, I thanks. Think with, the, with the media module, okay, implementing a simple um, uh, uh, versioning of, uh, let's say, the hashes itself, and you can avoid duplicate uh, large files. Yeah. Uh, that should be the first thing that we should be actually getting to immediately after. Nice, yeah. thanks. Yeah. thanks. Hey, thanks for a good presentation. Um, I had uh, two like related questions about sort of the way hashes work in IPFS. Yeah. Um, the first one is um, I've heard a lot of criticism around um, 
like for instance Facebook and other social networks that use hashing for files because when you delete something, it isn't necessarily ever deleted from um, the servers. It's the pointer is deleted, but because they store hashes of everything to prevent duplication, the file is actually still out there. Um, so I guess my question is one, what do you think about that? Um, and then the related one is, if all the files are being hashed, it seems like that would actually, while it would make tampering with the um, files easy to detect, it would also make surveillance of who's receiving those files or the file traffic much easier because all you have to do is look for the hashes of particular files that you as a government or a agency or an internet company doesn't want someone to access and all of a sudden the metadata has it all, right? Yeah. Um, so, I, yeah, so I guess I just wanted to hear your thoughts on those two pieces. So the, about the uh, first one, oh, sorry, what was the first one? I just the, um, like if you delete something, it's yeah, not really absolutely. deleted. So uh, the guys behind IPFS, uh, they are so currently they, there is a mechanism where the con uh, content which is which is not which is not being accessed, so they mm -hmm. age out, and okay. it's still out there, but eventually they age out and uh, they are overwritten at some point. So gotcha. uh, they are uh, this is not I think they are working on improvising this uh, aging out and you know deletion mm -hmm. process, but it is not uh, something that you can you know actively okay I want to delete this you cannot right. do that right. it will age out because it is not being accessed. So that's what how IPF, IPFS uh, guys are handling it, mm -hmm. and because in the end, uh, when you when we say that you know it's like it's permanent. I mean, it's permanent, but it could be overwritten uh, right, right. because the number of nodes are limited and the amount of uh, storage that each node is giving is limited currently. Right? Yeah, right. When the number of nodes increase, probably the possibilities might change. So that's what this current state is. Okay. And about um, the hash itself. Uh, like the surveilling government, yeah. the so if we are in a, for, in the, for example, we are in this room and we have five nodes here and we are communicating uh, and you have a file cop copy which I need, it's just between me and you. Okay. It's not something where, there's no central point where the transaction are being logged. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, yes, uh, like the standard blockchain stuff that you actually can access the full ledger, right? Mm. There is, but uh, not sure if, if, if it is being handled right now, it's absolutely like blockchain. So the problem you are seeing yeah, yeah. persists. Right. Yes, okay. it does. Thanks. Hi. So my question is, is it looks like you're still tying on a base level to the centralized system as far as like, I build a site and I have my images or PDFs or whatever hosted on IPFS but that, on the back end, but that front end is still a physical location yeah. that somebody goes to, to 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 at least get the the base links. Do you have any sort of plan to offer? Because this is, because a hash is not a very distributable piece of information. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not very memorable. I, I personally can't memorize thirty two, yeah. sixty four, <laughs> you know, thirty six character digits. Anyway, so do you have any sort of implementation model for implementing a truly decentralized sort of like let's say I want to publish a newsletter that would be disapproved by certain governments. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I want to. I'm just <laughs> picking a picking an example. <clears throat> Nobody here wants to. Um, is there a way that that could that there could be like, for instance, a central a, a, a an address that then go, goes to the decentralized, a simplified, almost like a Bitly, <laughs> for lack of a better example. Yes. So uh, the IPFS uh, organization itself, they provide IPFS.io. Mm -hmm. So that's that becomes your central entry point to the uh, complete, uh, you know, the files stored on the IPFS network itself. But you can actually uh, put your own DNS server, which actually which can directly talk to uh, the IPFS uh, system behind without actually depending on uh, IPFS guys themselves. Okay, that is one. Uh, second, if you look at this blueprint, there's a right part. Uh, I, I missed that one. So that, th this was something which I was also thinking about. In the end, we are putting a centralized Drupal application behind all the content, mm -hmm. right? We have uh, all the content on IPFS. How do we promote distribution of that? So uh, in that we, uh, case, we can think of a, a prepackaged Drupal profile, which comes with a mapping, which comes with the current mapping of, uh, you know, the the hash and the entity IDs. 
So all you need is a Drupal application which knows to you know which know, know which understands how to talk to the IPFS behind it and has a first starting point of existing mapping. You know, I think that's is a workaround. I don't know if it's a full-fledged solution. Uh, that's why I mentioned you know, if public repositories of that websites, you know, you, anyone can deploy that and ac access all the content. Now, within this mapping uh, of the entities and the hash, they can further be put into uh, IPFS of the full mapping, mm -hmm. and then that can be accessed by, you know, just so you basically just distribute one key, and it fetches all the mapping, and then, uh, re, you know, as a next step, get us, get kind of reinterprets it out. Yeah, too. so there are, these are all like workarounds with, you know, which could be thought around, thought about, but because mm -hmm. Drupal is, is all about dynamic content. Absolutely. So like, if I edit something, if I post a new article, yeah, you know, and I want it decentralized across the so IPFS network, of, that's 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 the ideal. That would yeah, be the beautiful that's the ideal. thing. So, so yeah. Drupal, the structure is pretty complex. So mm -hmm. there are a few uh, frameworks. So there there are browsers who utilizes IPFS. So all you do is install IP, uh, that browser, it creates IPFS node, and also lets you publish uh, web pages on it. Hmm. But again, the, the power available is very limited uh, compared to Drupal from an okay. editorial perspective. All right, thank you very much. Thanks. Last, Last question. <laughs> A great presentation, first of all. Um, what, what I see, this, this is gonna revolutionize the internet in, in I'd say about five to 10 years. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, because when you see all this stuff happen in third world countries, all the not only not only from a, a honest, open, you know, interpretation of all the data, but also financially. Uh, so it's a two part question. I'm sure business side and tech. Uh, number one, I, I see this as potentially being the next Bitcoin wave of date. Not only you know not currency, but you're talking about data here. And what what, do you, what kind of investment opportunities do you see in the future for something like this, uh, business wise? Um, that's the first part question, and the second part is how do you see how do you foresee governments and other agencies sort of trying to circumvent this this new wave of, of information that's going to be freely spreading through the internet? So um, I'm going to answer this latter yeah. part. Um, yeah, I know open source is free, but yeah. <laughs> not always, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, information will always be available freely in that sense. Okay. Um, whether Drupal jumps the bandwagon or not, it's going to happen either way. Uh, people will be uh, publishing content that will be censorship free. Okay, it's um, it's about how uh, we as Drupalers utilize this uh, uh, new technology in place. Uh, Juan Bennett, who the guy behind IPFS, uh, started this with a clear cut mission of to replace HTTP. So. Uh, yeah, uh, of course, uh, there's no governmental control. There's no central control that's going to happen. But that's going to happen either way. Because we are moving to a world where information should be available more freely. Okay, And uh, there should be no central organizations or corporations that should be controlling it at the end of the day. And we as an open source community understand the value of that. And that's why it, it just only makes sense to bring them together. Uh, uh, could you the first question again? Oh, please? just just uh, the business opportunity. Yeah, investment. Op I mean, you know, cri cryptocurrency was kind of a thing, and I see this being similar, but with different yeah. intentions. Okay, so uh, we want to no, so definitely not being equivalent to cryptocurrency at all. Mm -hmm. So that's one use case of blockchain. IPFS is another use case, absolutely whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're thinking in terms of do you want to invest something here? I mean, that's that's cryptocurrency, and that's totally separate sure. from from that perspective. There's a lot of mining. Um, there's a lot of proof of work that that goes on there. Um, nothing in terms of this is basically a protocol to share and store files sure. across a distributed file system itself. Right. Okay. okay. So yeah. Uh, does that? Answer? Yeah. No. No. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you.